Yo, it's 3K job out at 3K mom. What's going, man? I just jumped off the porch with dirty blood bass and you know the business, man. Straight up. Gang, exotic gas inside my pump. This ain't no regular. Put my feet so dirty in these streets. I need a pedicure. I block. Alright, so we got the one and only 3K job jumping off the porch with us today. Welcome, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm in the bed. Yeah, man. Welcome, bro. How we feeling today, too, man? Shit, I'm feeling great today, bro. Shit, it's been a long drive, but I'm here. You know, so. Yeah, my boy left in the middle of the night, drove all the way yeah. up from, from what? Palm, from Beach? Palm Beach? Whew. Scrape from Palm Beach. <laughs> right over here, bro. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, welcome, bro. For all sure. Right. Anything else, uh, you know, you got planned while you're here in the city, though? Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm supposed to be shooting a vid like tonight and tomorrow. It's mm -hmm. going to be a two day, two day shoot type shit. So, okay. I'm going to do two. Two shoots on some shit, get a video done while I'm over here, you know. I don't know, man. Every time I come out here, I really just be trying to see, like, what the motion is, for real. You yeah. know, I'm trying to network out here. That's really why I'm, I keep coming back. I've been coming back for the past, like, year. This is probably, like, my fourth, like, real visit. Oh, music real? wise. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, like, my fourth visit to the A on some music shit. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I plan on making that, like, a habit, you know. No, absolutely. This is the place to be for, you for know, sure. if you're doing music here in the South, too. Yeah, but. yeah. Absolutely, man. So West Palm Beach, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about the culture down there, man. What really be going on besides the beach, man? <sighs> besides the beach, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that shit ain't that shit ain't what it seems to be, bro. It sounds all nice and it sounds all like somewhere you could visit, but if you really from there, bro, like that shit get real out there for real. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty sick over there, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's two sides to Palm, the West Palm. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. There's saying? definitely two sides for sure. Like you got the big ass mansions. Big Don't ass mansions. Trump live over there, right? Yeah, yeah. You got the big mansions and shit, and then you got you feel me. You got the trenches. <laughs> hey, and that shit ain't pretty over there, bro. Yeah. That shit ain't pretty, man. But yeah, should I just do my thing over there? You feel me? Niggas really trying to get up out that bitch though. Palm Beach. That that really be everybody from their main goal, like to get out. Because mm -hmm. it ain't really that many people that, that really take off with none and really like spread their wings and like get out there for real. If you're from there, it's hard because motherfuckers from there be hating. I'm not going to lie. Like, for real. They real shit be hating. So hmm. you got to like spread out to people that you don't know, honestly. You got a better chance of blowing up like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. With whatever you do. Because I don't know. It's just, it just seems like people from the same place as you, it's like it's harder for them to support. I never understood that. But. Yeah, this shit wild when you think about it. You would think like your hometown. Yeah, so you like really boost. You feel me? And this this some shit you repping. You trying to push that shit so it's like you could rep your city and shit. And motherfuckers just, I don't know, bro. They never lift the bell. But that's what anybody from their hometown. I bet a lot of people could say the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And I take it there's probably a, a big Haitian, you know, population oh, yeah. there. Oh yeah, in for West sure. Palmer, it's, a, right? it's definitely a big like. It's mainly populated with Haitians. For real. I'm not even gonna lie to you. If it, ain't, if it ain't Miami, Palm Beach is like the second most populated mm. down south city with Haitians, you feel me? Yeah. Yeah, we everywhere over there, but, you know, when Palm Beach ain't, ain't on the bullshit, it's, it's, a, it's a good place to be, you know, that's where, that's where, um, we got stories over there, you know? Mm. Like, that's really where we came up at on some shit, so. If you know, you know, bro. Shout out to Palm Beach, 561. <laughs> Shout out to Palm Beach. Nah, I dig it, man. And like, yeah. what were some of your hobbies growing up there? Like, you in the sports? We always in music. What was you doing as a jet? Uh, shit, as a jet, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I always had like hoop dreams. Everybody had hoop dreams. Everybody wanted to be a ball player, football player, basketball mm -hmm. player. You feel me? I won. I won all that at it, but I was, I was cool. I was trying to get the gist of it, but I, I had hurt myself, so that shit was grits. So after that, it was like, damn, what the fuck else can I do, bro? And I had did a freestyle. Really what made me like actually like start dropping and actually rapping for it. I did a freestyle at high school. If you if you know you know type shit. That shit went viral like 2020, but hmm. I did a um a freestyle with Jordan Ross. Shout out to Head Knockers, man. Jordan Ross, bro. We did a freestyle and that bitch blew up and my music started going up with the freestyle on some shit. You feel me? So it was like, damn, this shit could actually work if I actually like tried it for real. So I said, fuck it. I say, I'm gonna start recording, start doing music videos, and 
ever since I've just been on the ground with this shit. I've always been rapping though, but it's like it's recently that I actually like made it made it a thing for real. Okay. You know? Yeah. Because you had dropped that Glock Out song. That yeah. shit was. That, that, that was shit. the first song I dropped. That was the first song that you dropped? That was my very first song I ever dropped. And I, I didn't even want to drop that song. You can ask any one of my boys. I was like, <laughs> bro, I don't even want to drop this shit. This shit is ass. They ain't going to like it. But that's one of my most streamed songs. Like, I was 16, over 100K streams on that bitch. God damn. In like the first month. True. And this is a song that I said I would. Oh shit, I'm dropping weed. This is a song I said I would never drop. I did not want to drop it. I was scared to drop that bitch. I'm like, bro, this shit is ass. <laughs> but, hey, that bitch blew up, so. Oh my God, I'm dropping hella weed. <laughs> that shit, Brady, I should have brought the big papers, but. Can you hand him a tray? Yeah. Yeah, we got a weed tray for you, man. Yeah, yeah, let me get a tray. <laughs> this shit ain't doing it for me, man. I need to get all this shit. Fucking roller utensils, but. So was it like the people around you telling you to uh, drop Glock out? Yeah, 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 for sure. My boys was telling me drop that shit. Bro, they always pushing me to drop, bro. That's one thing I fought with about my dogs, bro. Because I had, a, I had a, a season where it was like, I kind of took a break from music, for real. Because I, I ain't going to lie, I wasn't really fucking with none of this shit I was coming up with. It was like, I just wasn't really feeling the shit, bro. And I took like a two-year break. And that shit was drastic, I'm not going to lie, because it was like my music wasn't really moving nowhere. Hmm. I'll drop some shit that wasn't doing none. So it was just like, damn. But recently I had, you know, got the ball back, and now I'm starting to do my little thing with it. I'm trying to make things happen now, you know? Yeah, yeah I don't want to never have to go down that path again. But I had to take a break from this shit for real. Hmm. Was it where it's like you just wasn't inspired to create, or it's was like it just, I was, I was you inspired felt like you to create. You should have been further along. I, I was, I was looking for the inspiration for her. like it was like all the shit I was writing. I felt like it wasn't good enough, bro. I kept trying to look at what the next nigga doing. I'm like, bro, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? But it was like I was doing everything wrong because I don't, I don't need to be looking at the next man, bro. Because what he doing ain't going. You feel me? What, what's working for him might not work for me. So it was like I just had to find my own thing, find my own flow, find my own voice. And it took a while for me to get the gist of it, but I, got, I think I got the hang of it for now. So oh, yeah, nah, your shit lit right yeah, now yeah, too, yeah. man. I think I got the hang of it right now, so. Yeah. But even taking a step back, I wanted to ask you about that clap battle. Mm -hmm. That shit was hard. And that, that, that was my first video. Too. I recorded that when I was 16 years old. God damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That was my first music video. What was it about that song that made you want to, you know, Go ahead and shoot a video for it. You know, probably invest some money into it too. Shit, I'm not gonna lie. It, it was really cause I fucked with it more than Glock out. I don't even think I was supposed to shoot that song for real. Bro, it's a lot of shit that happened. Like a lot of shit that I didn't want to happen and it just happened. Like clap out of him, I wasn't even supposed to shoot that for real. Hmm. I wasn't even supposed to shoot that. It was just a song that I had and I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna shoot this. Man, whole video shoot, I'm like, I'm feeling iffy about it. I'm like, man, this shit, whatever. You me, bro? Once I got the product back, though, I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, shit. And that motherfucker got over 20K views right now. Yep. And I did that at 16, bro. You feel me? It ain't 100K, but it's something, though. No, absolutely. for it's your something. first video, that's good, bro. It's and it's on your own channel. It's not like on the videographer exactly, page or nothing you know? like that. And that shit is raw, bro. Like, no promo, no none of that crazy shit, fam. Hmm. Like, that shit is raw views, raw support. That's why I was like, it started giving me a different outlook on the shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who were you listening to back then, like around when you were 15, 16, when you really started, you know, who taking Who was I listening to? Shit. I ain't gonna lie, I was really listening to like, around that age, I was listening to more like local people. Like, okay. Jay Osama, you feel me? I was tuning in to Mari Montana. That's when I like got the high school started, you feel me? Peeping the scenery out more and shit like that. But I started listening to J.O. Um, Mari Montana, Reese Sosa, Hill Hussein, um, shit, who's some more local people I can think of? I can't really think of nobody else local, but those Olo are like probably the main right. people I can, yeah, yeah, people like that, Olo Pack, shit like that, I started tuning in to like the local artists and shit, and it was like, wow, there's really like a scenery out here, mm -hmm. like artists that like, like got voices and shit, and it's like, wow, we got our own set type shit, it's like a cast, you mm -hmm. yeah. Like how Air City got their own cast, Jacksonville got their people that rap, Orlando got their people that rap, Broward got their certain people that rap, but Palm Beach is like, it's like that too over there, but we just not as, you feel me, 
mainstream and like out there with the shit. We gotta build that shit up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's how I see it. So what do you feel like it's gonna take to kind of you know get the music scene to that next level then? The same thing gonna take for anybody else, bro. Hard work, dedication, support. That's all. It, that's all it takes. And people would support each other more, bro. Anybody could blow it. Everybody could blow it right now. Yeah. You feel me? If everybody really tuned in and really interacted, everybody could blow up, bro. It's just some people. I don't know what stops people from doing certain shit. I don't know if it's pride. I don't know if it's jealousy, envy. I don't know, bro. I swear, like everybody that's doing some shit out here, they really could be popping their shit if motherfuckers that see it really was pushing the shit out. That's how I look at shit, bro. But. I don't know, bro. People just always find a way to just make shit so complicated when it, it don't even got to be all that, bro. You feel me? But I don't know, fam. Shit. Is it more on the tip, like everyone just doing their own thing? Or is it like you said at the beginning where people real life hating on this shit, though? It's both. Motherfuckers doing their own thing, and motherfuckers hating. Like, if a nigga doing his own thing, he ain't going to be worried about what the next nigga got going on, which is understandable, because it's like you staying in your own lane. But, you know, the world don't just revolve around you, bro. It's other people out here doing their thing, too, so. You feel me? Even though I got my own shit going on, I like to see other local artists doing their thing, too. I like to support their shit. You feel me? Just shit like that, bro. That's what I mean when I say that. Like, I don't know, bro. It's just, it's always been a hard thing for people to support, and I never understood why. Nah, I got you, man. Yeah. But with this shit, you really just got to find your crowd of people that, that really go, that's really go consistently support you. You know, always go push your shit out. Always go fuck with your shit when you drop. That's another thing about this shit. You gotta find your crowd mm. and you gotta stick with them. You feel me? Stick with them and make that expand on some shit. Cause not, not just because you drop some shit or you trying to push some shit out that everybody gonna fuck with it. Like with this shit, you really gonna have like a set audience of people and you gonna have a consistent group of supporters. Mm-hmm. It's all about what you do with them. Like if you giving them what they want, they gonna give you what you want, which is that interaction. Yeah. You feel me? Nah, for sure, man. Yeah. So Rick and Morty, man. This song going viral right now, man. Let, let's just talk about the, you know, the creative process, the inspiration for this song when oh. you and uh, Olo uh, recorded this, man. Man, when I shit you not, man, that shit was supposed to be on some like, on some just, we just dropping it for the, for the city for real. Like we just <laughs> dropping that bit. That bit was, made over a year ago oh shit and we recently dropped it like a year after for real but that was supposed to be some shit we just dropped you know like how any any artist dropped we just dropping the shit we we've been supposed to drop it but we kept pushing the shit back we eventually dropped it it was doing okay i guess at first when it dropped it was doing eh. but once i did that little um freestyle with jordan ross and he posted that bitch <sighs> dog like I'm talking about motherfuckers reposting that shit, motherfuckers reacting to that bit, labels calling me. Bro, like, that shit right there, that shit just blew up crazy out of nowhere. So this yeah. shit been blowing up organically. Like, organically. like, cause I'm seeing people discovered on TikTok and they commenting on your other YouTube songs like, man, where that Rick and Morty at? All that shit is organic, <laughs> like organic, just real love, real love and support, bro. That's the one thing I like about the, the change that's happening in my music career, cause it's like, it's real love, it's real genuine. It's not no bots, it ain't no none of that shit. Like mm-hmm. I ain't had to pay no promo page or none of that crazy shit. Like it's real deal, supported from everywhere, bro. I'm talking about, I get texts from people from Germany, Greek, fucking Africa, bro, you name it, I swear to God, bro. Yeah. They from everywhere, they text me, bro. They like real love, bro. Like I support this shit, I fuck with this shit. And that's, the, that's really the, the audience of people that you want to have, like, foreigners and shit like that, bro, because they, like, they, they have different set of principles and values and shit like that. So, mm-hmm. like, when they see hard work, they appreciate it more. You feel me? So I started, I, I just really on, I'm really on some shit where I'm trying to expand my, my audience to really that group of people, foreigners, you know? I don't know, I feel like when they tune in, it, like, it hits a little different. Yeah. You know? So how does that make you feel? Like, like you said, man, your hard work looks, sounds, looks like it's really paying off. Are labels reaching out to you and type shit like that, man. That's just got to make you feel good, too. No, no, no. That shit definitely making me feel good, bro, because it was a point of this shit where I was ready to give it up, bro. My last Instagram page before they deleted it, that shit had like 
my shit was like, I wouldn't say it was jumping, but they were interacting with it, you feel me? And it was like, I wouldn't say my career really depended on that page, but that's where most of my interaction would come from. Yeah. When I lost it, it was like, damn. Basically lost it all, bro. All the people that was fucking with my shit, like, that shit just puts you in a whole different mindset, bro. And from then there, it was like, I wouldn't even say it put me through a depression, but it kind of like, it didn't really, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Like, it just, just unmotivated me. Yeah. I don't even know if that's a word, but bro, that shit just made me like, it put me down, bro. And it was like, damn. I done worked so hard to build this shit. I had this page for years, and now they just done took my shit. And it's like, fuck. But I had made a new one, bro. I didn't even really want to. I was just gonna make that shit just to make it. I wasn't even gonna really, like, I said fuck rap at that point. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm just gonna make an Instagram so that you feel me, people that I know and shit can follow me and shit like that. But I don't really care for this shit no more. But I, I say, fuck it. I'm gonna just continue doing what I do. And then I built that shit back up, and now I got two times the followers I had on that last page. Mm -hmm. And I had that page since I was in like fifth grade, bro. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I made I made this new page like about two years ago now. Okay. So, so it already surpassed. It already it already surpassed my shit times two. You yeah. feel me? All my shit going up quick. So it was like Yeah. That right there gave me the motivation I needed if anything. Real shit. You feel me? Have you guys talked about shooting a, you know, an official music video for the song now, man? I feel like you got to at this point, man. I already think they're ready for that. <laughs> that right though. I'm not gonna lie, that shit is like, that's something we planning, like, there's a blueprint behind that video, bro. That shit right there gonna be the key to everything, I swear to God. That shit, as long as we execute it right, dog, uh, I don't see no visual in history fucking with that shit right there. Hmm. If that shit come out the way it's planned, bro. But y'all gonna see what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. Hey, Rick <laughs> yeah, and Yeah, I was gonna Marty, say, don't man, give them too much. Go get that shit on our platform, man. Go tune into that shit. Y'all gonna hear that shit, but y'all gonna see that shit real soon. Trust me, bro. No, I real see that man. shit in real life. Oh, so you mentioned labels reaching out to you, man. Mm -hmm. um, they talking about anything good, anything interesting at this point, or are you kind of just, just hearing them out at this time? No, they definitely talking good. They talking good to me, man. They talking about, they want me to fucking fly out to this place, that place. They already done told me they want me to go to Cali and shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know, bro, this shit. It's like, it's different from what I'm used to, but I ain't mad at it, bro. This is the shit I've always hoped for with this shit. So Not real shit. I'm just taking this shit chin on, bro. With whatever come with it. And that's what I'm on. Yeah. Is there anything specific you looking for from a label? Like, obviously the money gotta be right, but anything like uh, beside, beyond that? The number one thing I look for in a label, really that, I don't feel like nobody else looking for this shit at the label. Loyalty, bro. You feel me, bro? I don't want to sign to no label just because they giving me a big, a big amount of money or whatever, or they giving me all these promises and shit. Like, this industry shit be fucked up, fam. Like, let's just, let's just keep that shit real off the flap. This industry shit fucked up. So, it's like, if I sign to a label, I want them to really be fucking with me for real, because then it's like, how the business operate gonna reflect on that as well. Like, they can, just, they can just give you a paper sign and give you the money because they see that you can rap, but, like, is they really fucking with you for you, though? Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like, that's the type of label I want to sign to, that people that's fucking with me for who I really am, outside of rap. Like, I want people to see, like, my motivation, my motherfucking drive, you feel me? Respect my talent for real, you feel me? But that's really what I'm looking for in a label. Yeah. Uh, uh, substance, mm -hmm. you feel me? Not just no money. That shit materialistic, that shit, you can get that shit on your own. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say, but yeah. fucking substance, bro, loyalty, that's not some shit you can just get. That's some shit that gotta, you know, you gotta obtain that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I look for when it comes to doing any business, any business really, shit, even videographers, bro. If I'm shooting videos with you, bro, I don't wanna just make this shit business. Like, I wanna build a actual connection with the person, bro, because I look at this shit deeper than music, for real. You feel me? With this networking shit, like even me coming across you today, bro, you never know this shit could build a whole new bond. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm trying to say? That's how I look at this shit. I don't look at this shit as I just come across somebody for the one time and we just go separate ways. You feel me? Because it's like, bro, there's somewhere we both trying to get at. Yeah. And we going to cross paths again one day at the top, <laughs> ain't it? So it's like we might as well get there together, man. That's how I look at this shit, bro. 
That's how I look at this shit. Just everybody actually building bonds. They be talking about networking, but they don't be talking about bonding. You know? I feel like if, if people started looking at it like that, bro, this whole music scene and all that shit would be completely different. They just look at it as business. No, real shit. Yeah, man. Uh, I fuck with that, my section. That song and video so hard, too, man. That song actually unreleased. Really? It's unreleased. It's not on our platform, though. Okay, yeah, I didn't see it on Apple or nothing like that. No, it's not. It's supposed to go on my album for real. Okay. I just gave it to them because they had got me the 10K following. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> for real. But I gave them that unreleased video because it was like on some shit. They gave me 10K followers. So I was like, come on. Give them one of my hot shits on the album. So I gave them that. But yeah, I got an album on the way. Haiti Baby, right? Yep. Okay. So what, what, what should we expect from that, man? Like, what type of vibes you giving the fans on this one, man? Hey. I ain't gonna lie. You turn one of them songs on, any one of them songs, they're gonna be like, that's 2K John, bro. <laughs> that's really it. I made that whole album just me. You hear me flowing, you hear me rapping on that bitch, it's like, yeah, that's him. That's him the whole way. That's him the whole way, bro. Yeah. That's how I was coming on that bitch. Any features we should expect? Are you riding solo on this one? Um, I think it's, how many features on that bitch? Rick and Morty on it. Okay. For sure. Um, I'm supposed to put one of my dogs on that bitch, Triple K. We had some shit on my first, first album that I dropped, but I deleted it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah I deleted it. I posted that shit like two years ago, but I deleted that shit because I don't I want to really fuck it with the quality and shit like that. Mm. So really, Haiti Baby is like, it's like to make up for that album on some shit. Okay. It's like my debut album for it. That was supposed to be it, but I had said, nah, like me going up with this shit, I want for them to turn it on and actually like, you feel me? Everything just gotta make sense. The quality wasn't really there and shit. And that type of stuff matters to me, bro. Yeah. Like even when I'm in the studio, if some shit gonna come out right on my end, bro, I'ma tell, I'm tell myself that shit is ass. <laughs> you feel me? Like if some shit just don't sound right, you gotta be real with yourself, bro, cause that's another thing consumers look for, quality. Oh, absolutely, yeah. When it comes to music, it's not just what it sound like. Well, not even what it sounds like, not even just what you're saying. It's about how it sounds. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Quality plays a long, a long part into how somebody receives your music. Of course, especially when you're riding you around and exactly. say you got that shit on shuffle and another artist come on and they shit louder than yours or you can tell the difference. Man. Like all that shit plays a part. So I try to make sure all my shit is like, now I'm on some, really it was on some quantity over quality back then, but now I'm on more quality over quantity. Like, I want everything that somebody played by me, and then they be like, yeah, he wrote that bitch. Hmm. Like, just like that, bro. I take that shit real serious, bro. That shit is like, your catalog on, like, your music catalog and shit like that, I feel like that shit is really like your fucking resume. Hmm. You feel no, me? exactly, yeah. No, it really is, shit like yeah. that. Like, they checking in and they seeing what you done dropped, they seeing what you done did in the past, and they can see what your first shit was, your recent shit was. And they can just go based off of that, like what type of artist you is, like, mm -hmm. you know. That's how I look at that shit, bro. Yeah. Uh, I know, you don't have to put an exact date, but when should we expect the album then? Shit probably gonna be out before this video drop. Oh shit. shit. <laughs> I'd be out for this video drop. Shit, y'all probably done played it before y'all even clicked on this video. <laughs> I don't know. Shit. So that's soon then, huh? Yeah, definitely soon, man. When I say debut, hey, y'all see me. This is my debut right here, so. Hey. <laughs> All right. For sure, man. What's some goals you got set for yourself in your music career then? Whether it's short term or long term? Goals I got for my music career. Let me think of a real goal I got. A goal I got for my music career, for sure. Um, shit. I really just want this shit to, this shit to put everybody around me in a, in a better position for real, bro. That's really all I, all I want from this shit. Cause I see that I can get that out of this shit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I can get a better life and I can give the people around me a better life. That's really all I care about with this shit for real. You feel me? If it was, if that wasn't an outcome from this shit, I probably wouldn't even be doing it. Yeah. That's all, that's all I'm really doing this shit for, bro. You know, cause my people, they weren't born here. 
They ain't have the same upcoming as me. You feel me? I ain't had it all, but I had more than them. You feel me? And I feel like that alone shows me that it shouldn't just be, oh, you give that to your kids, you give that to whoever. Like, build yourself so that you can give that to the person who gave you, mm -hmm. who gave you what you needed when you couldn't. You feel me? Like, all that buying your mama a crib, buy your mama a car, buy your dad a crib, dad a car. Like, I'm on that type of time for him because they gave me everything I wanted. Yeah. You know? Like, even if it was a pair of shoes, bro, and they, the bills was coming up, if I wanted a pair of shoes, they're gonna make some shit work, make some shit scratch. Hmm. Shit, even if they gotta hit the footlocker next week, they can't get it tomorrow, they're gonna go get that bit for me. Now that's real. You feel me? Now I feel like, like I respect certain characteristics in people because that just shows like, I wouldn't even say you have mercy, but you're selfless. You feel me? Like, you don't just think about yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if it's gonna put you in a, I wouldn't say a lower, What's the word I'm looking for? It's going to put you at a lower hand than you was because it's like they were making sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You feel me? They couldn't really go just buy no two, three hundred dollar shoes, but they were still making it happen because they knew that's what I wanted. You feel me? But it's all about that good karma yeah, at the bro, end of the day, too, man. Characteristics like that, bro, I, I feel like that shit, that shit really do hit me when I do come across people like that. Like my parents, I got to get on the world for real. Mm -hmm. Real shit. My parents, my siblings, my little brother and sister. You feel me? I be trying to do my best. I be trying to get them. Like, even if I see something that I like, I'll get it for them. Yeah. On some shit. I see some shoes I like, I'll get it for them because I like them. You feel me? On some shit like that, bro. That's just how I'm trying to, how I'm trying to do shit now, bro. Just provide for everybody around me. Not even provide, but just, you know, give. Mm-hmm. I feel that too, bro. That's on some shit. Uh, go ahead and plug your social media so everyone know where to follow you at, man. Hey, on all platforms, 3KJOD, the YouTube, 3K Mob, but you can just look me up and you, you're going to find that bitch on YouTube. My music videos and shit like that. Um, I don't got no other. You got Social TikTok though, right? Name. Yeah, TikTok, 3K Jod, you know, everything is the same name. Go, yeah, cause I feel go like you're the only 3K Jod out there, right? Yeah, <laughs> so you feel me? Same shit on, on our platform, man. Yeah, I go brain with me. Bit. And you got any shout outs you want to give before you wrap it up here, bro? Hey, shout out to that MOB, man. Shout out to that mob. Swear to God, man. Shout out to my brothers. For real. Yeah, bro. That's, that's the only shout out I got to give for real, man. Shout out to the mob, man. That's my backbone and my boys. So shout out to y'all, bro. And shout out to Palm Beach, bro. I'm here for y'all. So feel me? Putting on for the city. Not, not a lot of niggas. From my city, get to Not sit up Not too many, here. yeah, you right. You feel me? So it's an opportunity. I've, I've been watching this shit since I was a jit, and now yeah. I'm sitting in front of that same camera. So you feel me? Shout out to Atlanta, man. Shout out to Atlanta for having me. Fuck that. Shout out to Hayes. <laughs> Hayes. Hayes. Yep. Shout out to my boy Hayes. <laughs> man, shout out to Dirty Glove Bassett, man. Shout out to Off the Porch, all that shit. Oh, fuck. Shout out to everybody, yeah. <laughs> Exotic gas inside my pump, this ain't no regular Bitch, my feet so dirty in these streets, I need a pedicure I blocked all the holes, so what the fuck you whackin'